Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to design steel structures in STAD Pro Connect Edition according to the requirements of the Euro Code. In this video, we are going to be focusing on specifying our design parameters. So after you've specified your steel design code, you're going to go to your steel design dialog and click on your Define Parameters button. The design parameters are used to communicate design decisions from the engineer to the program. Now for this training, we're going to be highlighting a few of the most commonly used parameters. For a complete overview of each parameter available for each design code, you may want to also refer to the technical reference manual. So for this model, we're going to start with the SGR parameter. Now what's important to note in STAD Pro is that all design parameters do have a default value, which has been selected such that it is a frequently used value for a conventional design. Now the default value is always going to be indicated as you select the parameter through the design parameters dialog. So here I can see that the SGR parameter represents the select grade of steel. And it's set to 0 s 235. This is its default value as this was the value that was specified when I went to this area of the program. Now depending upon the particular design code requirements, some or all of the parameter values may have to be changed to model the physical structure. If the default value of a parameter does apply to any individual member in the model, then that parameter doesn't need to be assigned to that member as STAD Pro is going to automatically assign whatever the default is. Now for this model, we're going to go ahead and specify two different grades of steel. So let's select the 2-S35 first. Once you've entered a design parameter, we're going to click the Add button. And basically what's going to happen is it's going to be added within the parameters folder in the steel design dialog. Now you can add as many parameters as you need. For this exercise, we're going to be focusing on the select grade of steel. And we're also going to have, in addition to that one, we're going to have the 17S355H property as well. So let's go ahead and click the Add button. And then we'll go ahead and click Close to see what we have so far. Now here I can see my two design parameters have been added. And they both have a question mark next to them. When any parameter in STAD Pro has a question mark next to it, it basically means that it needs to then be assigned to whatever members or elements in the model for it to be officially added to the input file. So to assign a property, we're going to highlight the property, then select the members we want to assign it to. Now for this parameter, I'm going to assign it to the members in the model of a particular property. The easiest way to do that is to your select tab in your ribbon toolbar, and you can use any of these options or cursors. I'm going to select my property by property name. I'm going to tell the program I want to select all of the members that are of this property, the IPE 300. I'm going to make sure this property is still selected. And then I'm going to say assign to selected beams. And we're going to confirm that operation by clicking yes. Now you can see once a parameter is assigned to at least one member in the model, it will get a green check mark, check mark next to it to indicate it has been assigned. We'll go ahead and repeat this process for the SGR17. So we're going to highlight that property and then select the members that this gets assigned to. I'm going to assign it to the 150 by 10 SHS members. We'll assign to selected beams, and then we'll click the Assign button. Now that I've assigned the select grade of steel, let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the other parameters that might be applicable for you. So I can return to the Define Parameters dialog just by clicking on the Define Parameters button from the Steel Design dialog. And then it is good practice to kind of go through these parameters to see what might be applicable for your model. Next, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the UNL parameter. Now, this will be used to specify the unrestrained member length in lateral torsional buckling checks. Now, for this exercise, I'm going to assume that the infill beams at the upper roof level 
are braced by some type of deck or grating system every 300 millimeters, which res would resist any type of lateral torsional buckling. Now within this dialog, I can see that the default is the selected beam's length. So without specifying this parameter, it's gonna assume that the length of the member or the unbraced length of the member is from end node to end node of any particular member in your model. So instead of going from end node to end node, I'm going to tell the program that I am being braced every 0.3 meters. I'll go ahead and click the add button and then I'll click close. And then I'm going to assign this to the model. Now I'm going to start by selecting the property. I'm going to hold down my control key and with my beams cursor then, I'm going to select the members of my model. Now I could rotate my view or zoom in and out to make this process a little bit easier. Once you have the members selected, we'll go ahead and say assign to selected beams and we'll click the assign button. Now within this model, we're also going to be specing our uh, slenderness information. So to do that, let's go back to the define parameters area. Now to specify some slenderness information, I have a few different variables I can assign. Here I'm gonna find my KY and my KZ variables. These are used to specify the K values for the local Y axis, which is usually the minor axis, or the local Z axis, which is usually your major axis. In addition to that, I have my LY and my LZ parameter. This will be used to specify the length in the local Y or Z axis for the slenderness value of KL over R, and for the buckling checks, which will lead to your critical axial load. Now again, the default for your LY and your LZ is to consider the overall length of the member from end node to end node. Now for this exercise, we're gonna assume that the minor axis of a couple of our columns are being braced for, unbraced for the entire length of the column. To ensure that the bracing is considered correctly, we're going to specify an unbraced length for the minor axis as the length of the overall column. Now the columns were modeled as segmented members, so I want to make sure that the proper length of the members is considered. Now this will be the length along the local Y axis. I'm gonna enter a value of 5.43 meters. We'll go ahead and click the add button, and then we'll click close, and then again we'll assign this to the members in the model. I'm gonna select a couple of columns. I'm gonna select both segments of the columns. And then I'll go ahead and assign it to the selected members. Now the next parameter we're gonna take a look at is the torsion parameter. So I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna select define parameters again and I'm gonna find the TOR parameter. Now here I have a couple different options for torsion checks. Now, the default again is to include basic stress checks only for only if subjected to torsion. Now for this particular model, I'm gonna say ignore all torsion checks for my columns. We'll go ahead and click the add button and then click close. And then we're going to assign this to all of the column members in our model. All of the columns happen to be of this shape, the 150 by 10 SHS. So I'll go ahead and assign that to the selected members. Now the last parameter we're going to take a look at is the track parameter. So let me come down here. I'm gonna say define parameters one more time. And we'll select the track option. Now here our default is to output summary of results only. If you would like to control the output or the amount of information in your output file, you can feel free to use one of the track parameters. So here I'm gonna tell the program I want to output the summary of results with member capacities. Now this parameter doesn't affect the design, just the level of output in your output file. So let's go ahead and click the add button 
And then we're going to finish this off with close. And then I'm going to assign this parameter using my property command. Once I've selected all of my sections that were specified through the sections database, I'm going to assign this final parameter. Now for this particular model, we're going to assume that this completes our process for assigning design parameters. Again, you can come back to this dialog if you need to, if there's any additional parameters that are going to affect your design that really should be incorporated. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.